Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session today where I'm going to be talking about my journey into a product manager role. I'd like to start by saying that all the views expressed in this session are purely my own and does not reflect views of any of my previous employers. I'd also like to thank Product School for giving me the opportunity of sharing my experiences and learnings with this awesome group of aspiring product managers. So let's get started. Let me start by talking about my professional journey. After completing my engineering, I worked for a company called Canbay, which was my introduction into the software and tech world. I coded in Cobol and I developed my sense of logical thinking in this place. Post there, I went in for my MBA where I majored in quantitative finance and systems. And then I started working in a startup called Aptiva, which was in the financial risk consulting space. In a startup, you get flavors of multiple different roles. And I was fortunate enough to have that experience. Uh, one such role was that of a product manager. Some of the key skills that I picked up there was, you know, stakeholder management, uh, the art of storytelling and requirements gathering that we then translated back into a product that we built for them. Post the startup stint, I went and joined Goldman Sachs as a quantitative risk analyst. And some of the skills that I have learned there have stayed with me ever since. One such skill which is very, very important in the world of product management as well is called consensus building or the art of getting everyone to buy into your idea and then move to the execution stage. So how do you do that? Added to that, there were other disciplines that, you know, Goldman taught uh, me, um, chiefly being following through with your commitments, uh, showing up and your sense of self leadership as well as the demonstrated team leadership with or without, uh, entrusted authority. Post Goldman, I uh, started working as the lead of product analytics for risk and trust, uh, initially and then for payments in eBay. And then finally in 2022, I took the big step and moved into the uh, world of product management as a group product manager for the stores and feedback team. So this entire journey of mine has been really interesting, especially the last few years in eBay where I was really able to uh, make that transition from a product analytics to a product manager. And that was, that's what we are going to be talking about in detail today. So the first step uh, is to know your why. Why do you want to uh, do product management? And the key to that is to understanding the PM role. Our friend Dilbert here shares some pieces of wisdom. Um, this is not what a PM role is all about. So my, you know, I said uh, about understanding what the PM role is uh, in a big company uh, with set processes, you know, with methodologies that uh, have, that are associated with a product delivery. I, I wanted to really understand that to make sure that I make an informed decision. So what were some of the things that I was looking to understand? Uh, you know, skills and what are the experiences that are needed to be become a product manager? What do the goals of a product manager look like? You know, what are some of their key, who are some of their key stakeholders? Uh, what does a typical day of product management uh, look like? And then what differentiates a successful product manager from rest of them? So here are some of the actions that I took to understand all these questions that I had in my mind. One, I, as I said, I was working in the product analytics space. So I had the advantage of working with product managers and observing them in action. 
through my meetings, uh, you know, group meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, I, I really uh, developed this sense of, uh, uh, of appreciation of the way they go about their things, the, the things that occupy their mind in terms of priority, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the roadmap items and the metrics that, that they are uh, obsessed about. I also had multiple con coffee conversations with a lot of product leaders and product managers, not just within my domain, but outside uh, of that domain, but within eBay. And again, the goal here was to understand, you know, when they are looking to hire a PM, uh, what are the skills that matters most to them? You know, are people open for uh, for folks from different background or do they uh, only look for, you know, core PM skills and experiences? I got pointed to a, a lot of online resources uh, on Reforge, Coursera, YouTube, a lot of videos. And I did a lot of reading as well, you know, spent my time reading articles, books, blogs, listened to a lot of uh, popular podcasts as well on this topic of product management. I'll take this opportunity to recommend one book if you've not read uh, to definitely read that. And that book is uh, inspired by Marty Kagan. I have actually read that book twice. The first time when I was, you know, trying to make this transition, I was beginning out on this journey. And then second, once I had made the journey, uh, I had completed the journey, I had made the transition, I came back and tried to reread it to make sure that the concepts that I had understood it then they were in fact as it was meant to be and how did it relate back to the experiences that I was now having as a group product manager at eBay. The, the second most uh, important thing to do is to do a self-assessment. And actually, let me, let me take a step back. Is to first understand what are the skills and competencies that a product manager is expected to have? And then do a self-assessment against those skills to see where you are uh, on, on you know, the, the skills that are required. There are multiple ways of doing this, but the thing that I used was what is known as a PM competency map that has been developed by uh, Ravi Mehta who we all know is a strong, influential voice in the world of product management. This exercise, and you know, I provided a link in this deck, uh, so you can go and uh, read about it more and uh, do it for yourself. But basically what Ravi has done is that he's taken 12 competencies and grouped them into four broad buckets, uh, product execution, customer insight, product strategy, and influencing people. And then he asks you for each of these competencies to rank yourself from needs focus to outperform. So I did that exercise. And some of the things that came out for me where I was doing well or outperforming was fluency with data because I was working in the analytics space. Uh, voice of the customer. So, you know, I'm a person who likes to think about customer experience as we build product strategies and solutions. So this was uh, something that I was already doing and doing well. You know, product vision and road mapping. Uh, as again, as a product analyst, you, there are several opportunities where you work with your PMs and engineering partners to help build the product roadmap. And so I did have a sense of uh, the, you know, the what the skill was all about and how it would be measured. Uh, team leadership, you know, I was in a leadership position. So uh, team leadership is something again that I was, uh, I was already aware of. I was performing that in my current role as well as stakeholder management, you know, because I was in the position that I was, uh, I had exposure to a lot of senior leaders. And so managing their expectation, making sure that they are successful, you know, really helping product leaders understand the performance of their product or assess the opportunities for the product strategy. These were, uh, these were all 
things that I worked on. And, you know, those were some of the things that came through in the stakeholder management. So I was doing well on some of the, the areas. But then there were a bunch of areas where, you know, I did not have too much uh, experience or knowledge about. Uh, so just to give you a few examples, you know, all of those skills within product execution, you know, feature specification, product delivery, quality assurance, I did not know anything about them. And so I had to pivot back uh, to fill the gap there. I pivoted back to what I had done earlier, which is, you know, bank on these online resources like Reforge and, you know, courses on YouTube, uh, articles, books, which allows you to understand the concept of product execution and really see how you can develop those skills by really understanding. The advantage that I had was that I was working in product analytics, which is an adjacent function to uh, product management. And so for me, it, it, it was relatively easier, but uh, the best thing would be, uh, you know, it, to fill the gaps once you've identified them is to see if there are projects that you can get that allows you to build those skills or exercise these skills that you already have. Um, you know, if you, if your product counterparts are willing, ask them for a stretch assignment where you can work on, on, on projects that allow you to develop these skills. Have that open conversation with them and, uh, you know, see if, if, uh, that works out. Um, for me, I did not have any project, but I used all these secondary resources to develop my understanding. So uh, before moving on to the next step, so what was my why? Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, every few years I do want to work into in something new. And second, so that was the inspiration of moving in, of doing something uh, different from what I had been doing for almost like 10 years, you know, uh, analytics in uh, financial risk space and then within uh, within e-commerce. And then, you know, also the fact that I saw, uh, that, uh, that, uh, I could have a more, uh, direct impact with my customers, you know, the, the impact that could be measured, uh, through customer feedback or through business outcomes as a product manager, as an, uh, as a product analytics person, I could influence some of the decisions. Uh, but as a product manager, I could weigh in and then take a decision, uh, as well. So I felt that gave, uh, you know, that role would give me, uh, the ability to have, uh, uh, an impact on the customer's experience or business outcome. And I was really eager to do that. So that was my why. And having understood the competencies, having understood the skill gaps, having understood the PM role, uh, I decided that, yes, this is what I wanted to do. So my next step was to craft my story. <clears throat> Excuse me. My next step was to craft my story. For that, uh, you know, there were a few things that I already had under my belt. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, I had a deep understanding of the payments and uh, risk domain because I had been working uh, in that domain for a significant amount of time. And then having been with eBay for that period of time, I also understood the business of my company. So if I do uh, what that meant was that, you know, if I did need to make a transition to a different domain, I would still be able to do that because I understood the 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 business of eBay well and how the entire ecosystem worked with buyers and sellers. I then wanted to articulate my experiences in the context of a PM role. What does that mean? So, you know, if you think about a PM role uh, and then try to relate, you know, what are some of the projects that you may have worked on which resembled a, a PM's role, right? So, uh, to give you an example, there were uh, are there projects that uh, that you could have worked on which required a lot of cross-functional team collaboration, and you were getting everyone together uh, to make sure that you know uh, this this particular thing gets implemented. 
uh, or gathering requirements from your stakeholders. Uh, you know, your stakeholders have come to you with a problem. You're trying to understand that problem and then translating, you know, once you've understood the problem space, how do you then translate that into a scalable analytical solution, which helps them uh, which helps resolve their problem. So helps them move faster with execution, helps them understand their performance, uh, product performance better, or the business uh, business performance better. So, you know, doing those things. And thirdly, like, you know, are there any strategic product changes that you would have re recommended as a result of your, uh, of the analysis that you may have done through data analysis and insights? I, I keep saying you, but this is about me. This is how I went about, uh, you know, thinking uh, about my experiences and trying to put them in the context of uh, these three or four things that I mentioned. And the last thing was, you know, once you've really been thoughtful and thought about your experiences was to then uh, demonstrate a PM mindset. Now, eventually you will be going through an interview process and you'll need to demonstrate not just your experiences, but the PM mindset as well. So, you know, using the PM uh, jargons and lingo to communicate with the hiring manager could come in really helpful. And so how do you do that? Again, there are multiple ways of doing it, but I thought of, uh, I leveraged this SAL framework, which I came across uh, over the internet. Um, SAL basically is, you know, there's a problem that you've solved and you're going to talk about that. So first you start off by setting the context. What was the situation or the problem that you were looking to solve? What were the actions that you took? And, you know, which were the actions that you thought about, but you did not take and what were the trade offs of uh, uh, that that you made when you decided to take a particular action? Why did you make uh, that decision of going with one uh, action and not the other? So talking about that and then, you know, uh, what was the outcome of the action that you did? Did, you, did it uh, have any business outcome? Did it have any uh, outcome on your product performance? What were, what happened as a result of all of this? And then lastly, what were your learnings? Uh, you know, if you were to take away some learnings from here and apply it to your next project, what are some of the things that you would do uh, as a result of having gone through the experience of this project? So uh, putting all of that in, in, you know, all of the experiences uh, in, in that particular structure, and then using metrics, uh, you know, PMs are obsessed about metrics. So using metrics to demonstrate the outcome of your, uh, of the project that you work on, talking about metrics and why that metric is important is again, something that I was very thoughtful about as I uh, was crafting my story. The next step is the most important one, and that is preparation. And I've broken down preparation in um, two steps. Uh, and the third one is a little different. And I'll talk about that. So the first step, you start off by, uh, you know, updating your resume. Your resume is your marketing material. It is the first thing that the hiring manager is going to look at and form an opinion about you. So use this material to highlight the experiences which resemble a PM's role, to show that you have fungible skills which can be applied into a, uh, into a PM's role. And so for me, I brought out things like, you know, data-driven mindset, my team leadership, uh, my, uh, you know, stakeholder management and now how I've worked with, uh, you know, the, the different senior stakeholders that I've had. Um, so, you know, really talking about these and highlighting this in your uh, resume becomes really, really important. One other thing I would suggest is, you know, use the uh, what the Google recruiters call as the XYZ framework. So talking about your accomplishments like, you know, accomplished X as measured by Y uh, by doing Z. Uh, so try and put your uh, your experiences in that format, and that'll be helpful in highlighting these experiences. Next, uh, what is a 
what a PM interviews look like. Again, I spend a lot of time, you know, through my conversations with uh, product leaders and product folks through all these videos and podcasts. Uh, I got a sense of, uh, you know, what the PM interviews could look like. And broadly, you could think of it as, you know, four types of questions that get asked. So the first one is product sense, where the hiring manager or, you know, the interview panel is really trying to understand how you think about uh, product. How are you structured? How do you take a big problem, boil it down to the most important, smaller, smaller problem, and then go about solving that, right? So product sense is all about there are a number of frameworks that can help you answer, uh, that can help you, uh, you know, uh, form a frame, uh, form a way of answering these questions. Uh, but, you know, one of the, to give you an example, a very famous, popular uh, product sense question is, what is your favorite product? Why? Sorry about that. Why? And uh, how would you improve it? Um, the second type of questions are KPI definitions. Uh, so, you know, just talking about metrics, if I had to do this, what kind of metrics would I use to measure? How would I go about doing that? Third is case studies, which can be asynchronous, meaning, you know, you're get, given a case study 48 hours, uh, 72 hours in advance. You need to uh, solve that case study and put it in a presentation and then present it in, in to the interview panel. Uh, that's one form. The other form is, you know, a shorter case study is given to you during the interview itself and you need to solve that. Again, there are frameworks to, uh, to handle these types of questions. And, you know, I, I would go back and refer to them. One popular, uh, framework is, uh, circles method. So do go back and refer to that and try and think about some questions and use that framework as you practice your answers. This is something that I had done, uh, as I prepared for the interviews. And the last one is behavioral questions. Uh, you know, this is more like, you know, tell me about a time when you delivered a project uh, under immense pressure or uh, tell me about a time when uh, you had, you walked into a new team, a demotivated team, and you had to motivate them and uh, rally them around a common goal. How did you go about doing that? So, you know, these, these are typical behavioral questions. And again, uh, there is this popular framework called STAR, uh, situation, task, action, results. I showed a version of that in the previous slide. Uh, so just use that to frame up your answers and, uh, and, and, you know, prepare for uh, these questions. The last bit, uh, is asking for help. It is not necessary to go on this, uh, journey alone. You know, you can get a lot of help from uh, from other folks who have been in the product management world for a long time. So my suggestion here, and this is, again, something that I had done as I was uh, preparing for this, is to build that uh, trusted circle of people who you can approach and ask for help, whether it is resume reviews, whether it is, you know, reviewing your answers or responses to any of the behavioral questions that you may have drafted, or even taking, uh, you know, mock interviews for you uh, to make sure that your answers are crisp, relevant, and well thought through. Um, particularly for me, as I went through this, uh, you know, having these mock interviews with my PM friends uh, and getting their inputs and feedback on how I was showing up, was immensely helpful. So, you know, let's say you've done all of this and you land interviews, uh, which is the next step. One, one thing I definitely would like to mention is that, you know, it's easier to move into a PM role, transition into a PM role uh, in the same company where you've been working because you already have a, a, a repo of some kind with the PM community. People would know you, would know the 
the skill sets that you have and the value add that you can bring in their team. So it is, uh, you know, it is easier uh, to get through in the same company as compared to looking outside. But having said that, uh, you know, it is, um, it is important to realize when, when we go and ask, uh, you know, for an opportunity to move into a PM role to, uh, to join someone's team as a PM, uh, you know, there a hundred percent, uh, match of the skill sets is still not there when we are making that ask. And so if a person decides to hire you, they are taking a bet of some sort on you, right? And, and, this is the reason that you know you may find uh, resistance as you go through this process. You may find uh, that people uh, may not be willing to take that risk or take that bet with you. So uh, my my recommendation would be to stay persistent, to stay focused, go back on you know uh, understanding your why, knowing your why, to keep yourself motivated. And then uh, be focused on your preparation. Make sure you're uh, having, you're working on your story. You're working on your responses. You're preparing for your interviews with your trusted circle of uh, PM friends. And you're ready as and when the opportunity lands to give your best. It may take time. So be, be patient. But, you know, as you go through this, uh, success will eventually meet you. With that, I'll leave you with three key takeaways. Uh, the first and the most important is to really understand and know your why. Why do you think, why do you want to move into a PM role? The second step is to craft a compelling story. Uh, you know, as I talked about leveraging some of the experiences from past to show how you can uh, leverage them as a PM in your next role. And then staying persistent when you face resistance, uh, you know, when results may or not come your way, uh, just being persistent and making sure that, you know, as and when the next opportunity lands, you are prepared for the, to give off your best. With that, uh, I think we've come to a close. That's all that I had for today. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out over LinkedIn to you, uh, to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the day. Bye.